The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the March 28th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past, well, in this case here, 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right, 8 a.m., not 1 a.m. I'm doing the uh, Wednesday show at 8 o'clock in the morning, being replayed at uh, 1 o'clock. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Well, not if it's 1 o'clock, because I can't answer it. But here at 8 o'clock, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, as we've already had three listeners do thus far today. So that's a beautiful thing. I'd like to take your call or field your call or your email. Of course, if you're in the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Right now, as we take a look at the equity futures, you've got the Dow futures up 89 points. She's trading out at uh, 23, uh, what is it, uh, where is it, uh, 29 23,950. I'll get it. Small print out there. It is early in the morning. You've got the S&P futures up eight and a half. NASDAQ futures up 15. Uh, you've got uh, gold off $7. We're going to take a look at that. Silver down 12 pennies out there. So plenty to uh, look at. So let's go ahead and begin. And let's do this here. One of the questions that came in, this actually came in uh, late last night. This is from Kevin. And his question specifically was, why do I always look at the equity futures contract versus the indices um, to make decisions? And the answer is very simple. First, it's all about price discovery, and it's about, all about pattern recognition. So I trade certain patterns, many of which you know, the A to B equals CD, which oftentimes could be a Gartley buy or sell, could be a butterfly buy or sell, uh, could be a uh, price moving higher or lower with less relative energy. Those are great patterns. Could be a seventh wave move out there. And as an example, if we take a look at the S&P 500, uh, probably should, what I should do is change this to the NDX. I'm going to change this here real quickly to the NDX 100 uh, just because I'm going to stay with the NQ this morning because this morning we can see a perfect example. So here's the NDX 100 on a 30-minute chart out here. Now, you can see that at the close yesterday, it was a hammer candle. But if we were to do wave counts, for example, here from the low up to the high, we'd only be in wave number two. Um, and you and I like to trade wave number seven or letter G out there. We also like to take a look at price moving lower doing less relative energy. So a 30 minute time frame chart that we've got out here. But the real the real key is about being able to have the information that is giving that that, that, that we can get basically 23 hours a day. More information <clears throat> the better off you and I are at as far as pattern recognition goes. So do I ever look at indices? Yeah, of course I do. But it's really the equity futures contracts. For example, the NQ out here. So for those people that were short the NQ, this is where you can get a lot of information. First, I don't know what the wave counts are on the way down. We'll take a look at them. Uh, only into wave number five, that's letter E. So not really giving us a signal. But what did give us a signal as that... Uh, occurred out here as that fifth wave occurred 
me get my cursor going, was that we had price moving lower, doing less relative energy. That was at 4.30 this morning. So if you were up at 4.30 this morning, what you would have seen is that price was moving lower than the NQ, doing less relative energy. You would also have seen that the cavalry, what I like to call either the bulls or the bears, in this case this morning with price moving lower, be the bulls. So the cavalry for the bulls were out. We know that because they created that little piercing candle out here. In fact, they created a second piercing candle just one hour later. What did that mean? That meant that we should see at least a further bounce. Now, where would that bounce be? You just simply go back and you can see the little consolidation. I have this little black box that's drawn out here. If I move it down, you can see the consolidation. So as we speak right now, prices made it up to the top of the consolidation. Does that mean that this is the Now, we would not have that information um, uh, Kevin, by taking a look at the indices. We just wouldn't. The indices are yesterday's news. You want to trade. The thing about pattern recognition is not about being right or wrong. It's about identifying the pattern, then being able to determine what the likely next outcome is. And, uh, and if it fails, you just simply take your stops. You go on to the next pattern that is out there. If we take a look at if price is able to break above this little rectangular consolidation, what it does, it gives us a measured move that would, in essence, say that the NQ could trade up to the 6683-ish uh, type area out there. And this could be the end, right? There's no reason in here. There's nothing that you and I can see as we speak at 8, 12 in the morning to suggest that this consolidation is over. So there's no breakout, not yet. And therefore, price could always go all the way back down and test the lows of this morning at 430. So, Kevin, that is the reason why I like to take a look at the equity futures contracts and always make my decisions based upon what they are doing. Now, when I take a look at the Dow as an example, and I've given a price projection of 30,730, 30, I think is the number out there for its eventual target. Well, look, we're not going to talk about that, even though I mentioned it, but I use the indice to give me a price projection as to where price is likely to go to. That's out of the question until we see the highs the all-time highs get taken out. Until that occurs, um, uh, that uh, that price projection must be put on hold. Now, Larry had asked about the GLD and the GDXJ. He wanted to identify support levels. So that just kind of moves us into gold. So let's take a look at uh, gold first, figure out what gold is doing. Well, we know it's back about 8 bucks right now. Where is price headed to? And there's going to be, in essence, one of really three targets. The first target, in essence, has already been hit, and that is Stevie's Red Line. For those of you not familiar with Stevie's Red Line, that's referred to, or that is actually, the oscillator on change line. Oscillator on change line? What the heck are you saying? What I'm saying is if you look at the very bottom panel out there, you're going to see a price oscillator. The difference between two exponential moving averages, in, our, in this case here, the 19 and the 39 period, daily chart, 19 day, 39 day. That When that is above zero, as it is in gold, then the message is bullish. When price gets down to Stevie's red line, the oscillator and change line, that tells us that the price oscillator is moving exactly sideways. A rising price oscillator, the simple interpretation, bullish. A falling price oscillator, the simple interpretation bearish. You have to understand where that price oscillator is, though, above the zero line or below the zero line. So we may have, I'd say may, gold has come down to a level of support to test it. If it bounces from here, well, what I can say to you, Larry, is a G, I think you said maybe the GDX and the GDXJ. That would look good. But what if this level fails? Where does price head to? We'll answer that when we get back from this break. See Rose with TFNN at the 8 o'clock hour. We'll be right back. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 2018 placed me as the number one 
Gold Timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timer's Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. So if we take a look at uh, if we take a look at gold, let's continue looking at it. And we were looking at the pattern associated with the short-term bottom, at least at this stage here, for the NQ. The bounce may be over. Price got right up to where it should. That was the uh, top of its consolidation. We can take a look at the 120-minute time frame chart here for gold. What you're going to see is that price was moving higher, doing less relative energy. Uh, the confirmation of the reversal came at 6 o'clock yesterday morning. Follow through during the next two-hour session at 10 a uh, at 8 a at 8 a.m. I, I can figure this out. Six plus two is eight, uh, and then that has led to lower price. Now lower price to where? We took a look at Stevie's red line out there. If that doesn't hold that support, we'll just simply fall back to the 120-minute time frame chart. And here we would take a look at this little red dash line. This real little red dash line is the uh, Tom DeMarc uh, uh, support line, and that's around the 1328 level. Does price have to stop there? The answer is no. Where would it go if that level fails? Where it goes if that level fails, then you and I would fall back to one of two things out here. We can take a look at an A to B equals CD to the downside. So let's do that. That's on the 240-minute time frame chart out here. So as we look at this, that would give us a one-to-one uh, -one price projection in the 1332 level. Okay, interesting. That kind of lines up with Stevie's red line. Below that is 1328. That lines up with the uh, dash red dash line on the 120-minute time frame chart. The 1.618 is the 1322 level. So, um, Larry, where I know you're looking at the GDX and GDXJ, and you're looking more from a long-term standpoint, and we'll give you those levels as well. Uh, gold uh, is on its way to pulling back. and has not given us a signal of finding a bottom. Not yet. Yes. Not yet. So let's watch that 1333 level. If that holds, that becomes uh, bullish both for gold and should for the mining equities. Now, as to the mining equities, what you're looking at with regard to the GDX out here, if we take a look, speaking of consolidations, let's just simply take a look at, let's take a look at the uh, weekly chart. 
because this really sums it up for you with regard to the long-term aspect that you really were looking at. Because one of the things you were saying is, hey, I'm in a trade. I want to hold this for the long term. Where would a failure be? Well, a failure to me would be below this consolidation pattern. And really what we have going for us right now is this week the GDX had formed a brand new market profile. And that gives us a price level of support or potential support at 2117. So 2117, which is just slightly above the consolidation, I would say the consolidation low would be about $21, even Stephen out there. And if you were to see a move below that level, and you were to see do it on a weekly basis with more than, uh, let's say, 200 million shares out there, at least a 200, yeah, well, 326, um, you know, that'd be bad news. Now, the top end of this consolidation of the GDX is right around the $25 level. You were talking long term. Really, the GDX, that is the, these are the areas that you should be taking a look at. Bottom of the consolidation at this stage here would be your buy if you were going to look to add. And then if you broke the consolidation, you just simply exit that trade. GDXJ. Um, you know, it's got a similar type of consolidation pattern from a weekly perspective. The bottom of its, of its box out here is 31.12. I would say if price were to close below 29.33, that would be a problem or should be a problem. The real number really would be the December 19th level at 27.37. Upside potential at this stage here is right around the highs from the week that began January 22nd, 36.08. So, Larry, thanks for writing in. I hope that that helps you out there. Now let's take a look at the, the next question that did come in, and I'm going to pass on this just for the time being, because uh, what I want to do is I want to I want to take a look at um, what the markets are doing on a little bit larger time frame basis out here. And in essence, I'm going to go back to Kevin's question, which is, you know, why do I use the equity futures contracts versus the indices out here? I still use the indices. But my signals, most of my signals, not all, most of my signals come from the uh, the futures contracts. Well, if we take a look at the NDX out here right now, we're going to take a look at it on a weekly basis. Because the, the one pattern that has been consistent at the beginning of every bear market is where price moves higher, does with less relative energy. It is always, now I didn't say always, I meant always. I didn't mean 100% of the time, I meant 200% uh, of the time. It's always present before the beginning of every bear market. doesn't tell us that there's going to be a bear market. We have to use a set of tools just like you and I do, which are price projections. Where is support? If support fails, then where's the next level out here? And inside the NDX 100 on a weekly basis, you know, a lot of times people will talk about, look, that relative strength indicator is up at these high levels. That is not a top. For the most part, that's 99.9% .9 of the time. And if you take a look at the NDX 100 on a weekly basis, where it actually hit its highest level was January 26 out here. That was a reading somewhere north of 80 out here, um, exactly about 83. That's never the problem. The problem is when price then eventually moves higher, as it did back here on March 16th, and it does it with less relative energy. Now, that alone is not the problem. The problem becomes when the cavalry arrives. We looked at the cavalry on a 30-minute chart for the NQ. We saw how that pattern had worked. Price moved up to resistance, the top of the consolidation. Well, in this case here, price closed below Stevie's red line, gap down. That's your bearish reversal signal. And it is going to be all about the NDX 100. If this market's going to find a bottom, that's the place that we need to really focus in on. That's where the signal, because this has given us a weekly, a weekly signal that says you got to be careful. And that was before all the Facebook stuff out here. If we take a look at the NDX 100 on a, a daily basis, well, that's given us that island top. The island top, that took place, uh, maybe it's hard to visualize out here because I've got so much stuff, but we did have a gap to the upside on March 9th, and then when we had the gap to the downside on March 19th, 10 calendar days later, that created that island top. And what we know is that that is a very bearish signal. Where is price likely headed to? To the downside? At least to a test of that February 9th swing point. Now, here, what we've just looked at, Kevin, are the indices for messages out there. 
if we take a look at the monthly, and that's the last place that you and I are going to stop on this chart out here. As we take a ride on the reading, because we're reading the markets, you can see that price has also just moved down on a monthly basis to Stevie's red line. So on a monthly basis, all those bearish reversal signals is really where you and I would look to see if price can find support. If at the end of the month, and today's the 28th, so what do we got? March, we got three more days left in the month, really just two, really just one. One, one more day, that is tomorrow. If price closes at or above Stevie's red line, still no major damage. Resistance, absolutely. Basically, the highs of uh, this month because of that, uh, because of that island top that is out there. If those get taken up, Nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. So what is Stevie actually saying? Stevie is saying the only indice that has a significant topping pattern, the only one, is the composite, the NASDAQ composite, or the NDX 100. And that's where we really need to keep an eye. For those believing a bottom is forming, you've got to find some bottom signal there. Otherwise, it's really just counter-trend rallies for the moment. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com Welcome back, uh, folks. So a uh, quick check in on the equity futures. You've got the uh, NQ basically flat up about a point or two right now. The ES mini is up 10 points. The uh, Dow equity futures contract up 119 
Uh, Russell uh, futures contract up uh, six. Uh, gold is off now nine bucks, trading out of that thirteen thirty two. So really, right at uh, Stevie's red line out here. I see there's some Q four. Uh, GDP numbers out, uh, but I can't uh, see what those are. Actually, that doesn't matter. Let's go take a look at. Let's go take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract up 40 percent, up uh, four tenths of a percent. My apology out here, because uh, as we take a look at uh, bottoming type signals, and we definitely received one both in the Dow Equity Futures contract (YM) and the ES on a daily basis. That took place on uh, Monday out here, and it did so because we saw price was moving lower or you and I did, price was moving lower doing less relative energy. And the cavalry arrived, forming that bullish engulfing candle. And then, even as of 12 noon yesterday, price was trading above Stevie's red line. Now, see that price oscillator bottom panel of the screen out there? Below zero. And so what needed to occur yesterday was follow-through, which the Dow Equity Futures contract did have at 12 noon, even had it at 12.10, even had it at 12.15, 12.20. Maybe it started uh, giving way to saying, not so fast out there. And the not so fast is that Stevie's red line in this instance here uh, acted as resistance. Now, that's not a good thing. That uh, does not confirm that the bottom has formed inside the Dow Equity Futures contract. What needs to occur there is price must close above Stevie's red line. Just like price must close below Stevie's red line on the daily chart for the gold contract. That number, as we speak right now, and it'll change throughout the day, is 24285 So if you're listening to this show at 1 o'clock, this is being taped at uh, 8 a.m. Right now it's 8.32. You can go check to see where the Dow Equity Futures contract is trading. If it's trading above Stevie's red line, like I say, about 24 right now, 285 Then that would be a confirmation of Monday's signal out there. And that'll help. Now, that confirmation to the upside would just simply say that price would likely trade back. Let me get my cursor out here. Would trade back into the uh, February 27th level. That's where you last saw the, uh, the real cavalry from the bearish side out there. That's where the snipers are hanging out. That's the February 27th level. That's right around a price area of 25780 To the downside, well, to the downside would be a test of the uh, February 6th low, somewhere around the 23150 ish uh, type area. I'm not really grabbing the exact price, uh, just giving you an approximate range out there. Now, you'd want to see if price moves lower, does this price relative strength divergent pattern continue it may it may continue out there in other words the rubber band could be stretched what we also had occurring this is kind of interesting at the same time that the bulls rushed in on monday march 26 you got one of those nice tom to mark td set up nine counts out there oftentimes can be a reversal point it's not going to be a confirmed reversal until price closes above Stevie's red line. Until then, it's just simply counter trend rallies that are out there. Now, the YM is the one that did all the heavy lifting yesterday to the upside, and it was the uh, NQ that did all the heavy lifting to the downside. The ES Mini had the same pattern out here as the uh, YM, as the Dow Equity Futures contract did on Monday. But price never really got up to Stevie's red line. Um, and so this pattern also remains suspect. But inside the ES Mini, and it'd be a big move today. That'd be about a 50-point move, which, quite frankly, is the average true range. And we'll go find out what the average true range is. But price would need to close above 26.75. That number will change in order to really confirm that bullish pattern that we looked at inside the ES Mini. And what we've been seeing here over the last, um, well, 10 days, let's take a look at the last 10 days, inside the ES Mini, the actual average true range, the actual average movement is 50 points. 49.81, but you can't get to 0.81, but that's the average over the last 10 days. If you take a look at the Dow, what's the actual average price movement of the Dow? That's 485 points. That is just normal. So what does really all that mean if you're going to take a trade to the upside or to the downside? And you don't want to get knocked out by just normal. If that's average, that's called the average true range. I got to ask you a question. If you had an employee working for you and see all these candlesticks, all this price out here, these are our employees. We're just interpreting what they're doing. But if you had an employee working for you and they did an average job, how would you feel? What would you do? 
Would average be good enough for you? I don't think so. I know you have a higher standard than that. That means if you're going to take a trade, make sure you know the average true range. And then make sure your stop is outside of that. Yeah. So, for example, if you were trading the Dow at 485, you wouldn't do that. You'd probably just do the Dow Diamonds. Let's just use that as an example. I'm not saying take the trade. What I'm saying is that your stop needs to be more than $4.88 away from wherever you enter that trade. And really, the best thing to do is take that 488, the last 10 days average true range, multiply that times 1.272 or 1.618. And in volatile markets, the larger the better. And then you're going to say, man, Steve, oh, that's a large stop out there. 488, 1.618. I don't know what is that seven dollars we call it seven seven fifty inside a trade inside the diamonds no it's not when you understand what your stop is that then gives you your position size you just identify your risk i say one percent risk you got a hundred grand in your account one percent is what a thousand buckaroonies you take a thousand bucks you divide it by that 750 that's what tells you how many shares to buy with one exception you got to take that number of shares times the actual share price. And I would say if that's more than 40% of your account balance, then you probably even back it off further. It says you don't even have to risk 1%. So it's all about position sizing. If you get position sizing correct, and the only way you can really do that is just simply in volatile markets, some people think, I need a tight stop. Have you ever heard that? It's a volatile market. I need a tight stop. All you're asking for well, what you're saying is that you know where price is going, and I want to meet that guy or girl. I want to meet them because none of us know where price is going. But what we can do is we can take average, and we can turn it into extraordinary. And that's what you do when you take a look at that average true range, multiply it times some type of Fibonacci level in order to figure out what your stop should be. I don't know how I got off into that tangent, but I did. And thankfully, I did, I suppose. Let's go take a look at, um, let's go take a look at, no no questions out here. Oh, uh, smaller time frames. Yes, there is. Jeff wrote in and he asked, can we use these patterns, all these things that we've been talking about, and use smaller time frames out there? And the answer is we can. And he was referring to Japanese candlesticks, everything in essence that we've talked about out here. And what we can see, this is a two-minute chart. And he specifically was asking for a two-minute time frame chart out here. What did I do? I wanted to try to, oh, i got to hit the right button. If you hit the right button, then it typically works out. And here's a two-minute chart. It's just updated. I want to see the current patterns, if anything, that is out here. Now, what I would share with you, Jeff, is the following. If you're going to trade on a short-term, really short-term time frame, such as the two-minute out here, what I would really be doing is I would really be paying attention to the TAS market profiles. Those are the black and blue and red dash lines on my chart out here. You can see prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. You can see the bear sash out there. On a two-minute basis, that signaled price might want to move a bit lower from here. Steve Rhodes at 8.38 in the morning. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the last question was really for Jeff. You want to understand, hey, can I use these same sets of tools, uh, Japanese candlesticks, the patterns that you and I take a look at on short-term time frame charts? And the answer is you can. But, Jeff, I, what I would caution you is what I have, my experience has found that the best patterns to use, if you're going to go down to like a two-minute, a three-minute type chart out there, the best patterns are really understanding these TAS market profiles, as well as the Rhodes Momentum trading signals. Those happen to be these uh, green and red boxes out here. And you can combine those with the uh, TAS market profiles, and, and they're extraordinary in their ability to help guide you on a short-term basis. What's really key, the problem with short-term the problem with real short-term trading is that uh, you can get caught up in the consolidation, get chopped up, right? But we're in, this is perhaps the one of the better time frames. If you want to trade on short-term basis, this is one of the better time frames to do it. Because if you're going to be good at it, this is the time frame to be doing it. Why did Stevie say that? Because of these large average true range days that we have out here. To both sides. If we were in tight ranges, meaning the average true range of the S&P was five points versus 50 points, which one do you think you'd be more successful at? Exactly. The 50 point type move out here. And you see all these little red boxes. This is a live chart that we're looking at since about 530, 6 o'clock this morning. See all these red boxes out here? Those are momentum signals. And when all you see are red boxes, it tells you th this acts as like an EKG. In fact, I'll do a workshop on it for subscribers over the next couple of months out there uh, because it is really a, maybe I'll try to even do it sooner uh, just because it is such a, a cool tool and, and for short term time frame traders, really helpful. Then I show people exactly how to go ahead and calculate it on their own. I went ahead and programmed it so I've got the uh, signals when they uh, when they confirm, they pop up on my screen. But all these red boxes, so it's like an EKG. An EKG, um, you know, goes from top to a bottom. 
Uh, just kind of like a relative strength indicator uh, with, from, you know, from the 80 to the 20 or the 70 to 30 uh, level, you know, just a sine wave out here. And this is like running a race. Here's the race. You're reading the emotion of the markets. When you can't back, get back down to the bottom level, it just means it means sellers aren't anywhere around. It is buyers that just keep pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding. The first time you see any sellers, or it would be normal, in this case here was when we saw that first green box. I was at 750 this morning out here 750 and you can take a look at the stair step approach here of the uh, TAS market profiles uh, if you're long as long as price doesn't close below a bottom it says go ahead and stay with the uh, trade out there once it closes below the bottom it says uh oh time to reassess not necessarily just to go ahead and automatically change to the short side but reassess so Jeff if you're going to trade on a short-term basis I would say of all the patterns that I've seen out here get access to the TAS market profiles and then learn Stevie's Rhodes Momentum Trading Signal Indicator tool out there. We've got a request to take a look at Exxon Mobil. So let's go take a look at it. XOM is the uh, ticker symbol. That's trading out right now in the pre-market in about the 73. So the last trade fired off was 73.73. That's three cents above where it closed. <laughs> but <coughs> I see other trades at 73.85, 73.90 out here. If we take a look at Exxon Mobil, here's the daily time frame chart. And let's do this out here. Let me try to do this. XOM, <coughs> excuse me, on my other charts. What does this tell us? What does this tell us? <sighs> How are we going to read this? On a daily chart, I'm not seeing a whole lot necessarily. Let me put it on a weekly chart and see what kind of swing point we're going uh, back against. And also, now my daily chart, and I'll punch this up on the screen here in a, a moment. But I'm just trying to understand where is price going against us. And we're trading into the uh, swing point on a weekly basis. Uh, that takes us back to January 18, 2016. About 100 million shares traded back then. And we've been trading, last week was 79 million, the week before 90, the week before 91. This week 30, it's going to be a short week, but it's already uh, two days. So four days, going to be 60, add another, you know, so it's about 90 million. So it's moving, and it's also moving into the real swing point, which is August 24th, 143 million. Now it's trading inside that swing point albeit with light volume. You never know if that low is going to be tested. That would be 65.55, the high 75.98. As long as price doesn't close above 75.98 on a weekly basis, then price could go down and test that level. That's what I see when I look at the weekly time frame chart for ExxonMobil. If I take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, that's what we're going to pull up on the screen. This suggests maybe one more push lower. See how price made that... Uh, topping pattern out there just like we looked at at the ndx on a weekly basis and the pattern that's been present before every bear market in the dow for the last 130 years out there that's all the data that steve has we're in wave number or it made two days ago wave number six and you and i we like the seventh inning stretch speaking of seventh inning stretches we've got some baseball that's coming right this is next week is the opening day i think every team is playing on opening day. How cool is that? Do you ever take off a day from work and go to opening day out there? And nothing like a good hot dog with a little mustard on it. I know some of you like ketchup on there. I kind of say, shake my set head and say, must ketchup on a hot dog? Uh, sacrilegious. Of course, if you grew up in Detroit, it would be a Coney dog. You'd put chili on it. You'd put some onions. You'd put some mustard. And uh, you'd probably have a second one because once you, you can't just eat one of those things. Well, in any event, I got off track here, but what you'd like to see ExxonMobil do, at least on a daily time frame chart, is push below the lows from, looks like Friday, get to that seventh wave move, and then see some type of rejection. Now, one reason why uh, Mr. Polar Bear, David White, probably wanted to take a look at ExxonMobil is because of all the sectors inside of the S&P 500 that have potential. Right now, for finding a bottom, our TAS market profiles say it could be the XLE, which we know ExxonMobil is a significant portion of it. Right now, as of right this very second, there are nine, nine issues inside the XLE, which is just a, I don't know, how many issues are there? Well, there's 10, 23, uh, 31. How do you like that? 32, 32 issues. Of the 32 issues inside the energy sector from the S&P 500, nine are trading above the top of the box, 11 below the bottom that's truly as of 849 in the morning out here so slightly bearish which would suggest and here's a daily basis out here so it's not too bearish but look see all these crossovers here crossovers in essence that began on march the 12th 
real consolidating market that we are in inside of the energy sector. When we looked at that daily chart, we saw all that choppiness going to the uh, right out there, also confirming a choppy market. If there's any market that you want to stay out of, unless you've got a lot, nice wide range, it is a choppy market. So the energy sector has potential. It has potential. But I think you want to get to that seventh wave, Mr. Polar Bear. We've also got a request to go take a look at uh, bonds out here. If we take a look at bonds, uh, and I know the question was to go take a look at the continuous contract, and um, not just uh, ignoring your request out there, but if we do take a look at the 30-year uh, treasury out here, um, one of the interesting things in the question is, is this the end of the move? The move from the highs out here, this again is a weekly chart, from the highs back on uh, December the 11th, 2017, down to the lows out here, February 19th, 2019. You're going to see from uh, Leonardo, not DiCaprio, but Fibonacci, price has made it to that first level, 146, even Steven. We're trading just slightly below that as we speak right now, but if you see a close above that, 148. 27, 30 seconds would be up next. That would be a big move. We'll be right back. Would you like exposure to the foreign currency markets without any downside risk to your principal? Then consider the Petro Currencies Market Safe CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD leverages the performance of four equally weighted currencies from these top oil producing countries Brazil, Canada, Mexico, and Russia. This CD features a 200% leverage factor, which means that your potential upside payment will be double the currency's average performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And if the returns are negative, your principal's 100% protected. Returns are based on CD performance with no correlation to the price of oil, and there is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. The April 19th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA FSB member FDIC. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So, quick request out here. Uh, Morgan in the den want to take a look at the 60, the 240, and the daily profiles for the ES Mini. So, uh, you've got those right now. That's what's on your screen. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, Treasury bonds here, the continuous contract now. And uh, if we take a look at the weekly time frame, the way that the market makes tops and bottoms, uh, really the same thing. And we can see here on a continuous contract on a weekly basis that price had been moving lower doing a less relative energy. It was doing that through February 23rd, 2008. You had the cavalry rush in here, uh, and they didn't show up until March 16th. March 16th, they had a nice little bullish engulfing candle. The very next week, that was last week, what we had was some follow through to the upside. What we see this week is price is now trading above Stevie's red line out here. That is a sign of a bottom. Yeah, a bottom. That's what this is a sign of. And this would say we looked at the uh, current contract out here, the June contract, and uh, what we said is, hey, once price can get above the point three eight two retracement level of its move down, it could easily head up to the point six one eight. I know that is diabolical. and People are saying, but the Fed is raising interest rates. How can that possibly be? And the only way that it can possibly be is to go back and study history. And if we take a look at history, let's see if I can get this done here in less than a minute's time before we go off the air. By the way, this show here is being taped at 8 o'clock in the morning. So uh, if uh, you're listening to it in the normal slot out there uh, and numbers aren't lining up, I apologize. Uh, but I wanted to make sure we had a, we had a show today that, um, that we could take a uh, look at. So these dates that are out here, by the way, uh, so how do I do this? I've got to go back real quickly. I can't really do it quickly, but I'm going to go back to 2004 as best I can. And what we're going to see here is we're going to see, oh, I got to put this other chart up on the screen here at the same time. Sorry that it wasn't set up. Uh, but this is going to show you between 2000 and we're not even uh, 2002 already. How did I do that? Where is it? Here, you can see the Fed when they were raising rates. Here's the Fed from 2004 to 2006. The bottom chart is a 30-year Treasury. And all I can tell you is that bonds moved higher and 30-year rates moved lower for a long period of time. It is not out of the question. It isn't. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesvento is up next. Of course, it's really David White if it's 1 o'clock. And I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Thanks for being here. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.